Okay, so we're gonna sew on the sewing machine now. And I'm sure you figured out how to thread the machine. If your machine is brand new, it came with a manual. And I'm sure in today's world, they also gave you links to videos on how to actually thread your machine by putting the spool on top, threading the thread through the top and putting the bobbin into the bottom. So um, in the event that you have a machine that's been given to you that's a few uh, years older, you can definitely find how to do that and thread your machine on YouTube. I can almost guarantee you it will be there. Um, you can always reach out to me and I will provide as much help as I can to you, of course, because that's what I'm here for. But in this course, what we're gonna do is actually sew on the sewing machine, practicing how to make pouches because it's the simplest and easiest thing to do. It's so simple that I don't even give you a pattern. You're just gonna cut a uh, rectangle of fabric. And if you want, you can use the pouch uh, pattern from, I guess that was course three. So you can use that, but you don't even need a pattern. Just cut out a rectangle. All right, and I'm gonna show you how to sew this and how to do what we call a back stitch so that your pressure points where you turn it right side out don't fall apart. All right, so you're gonna do a square one because you're gonna practice sewing straight and pivoting. And then you're gonna do one with a rounded bottom. So you're gonna practice how to also do curves on a sewing machine. And it is very simple. So please feel free to make as many of these as you want and just practice because the better you get with practicing on your sample or practice fabrics, the better you will be with your actual uh, sewing project. So just a quick note on safety. I think safety is, it's pretty much common sense here. So when your needle is going up and down and you're pressing, please keep your fingers away. There are actually what we call finger guards, but um, I don't use them. I think they get in the way of my view, even though they're not supposed to. But if you feel that you need one, um, I don't think you're, you're probably afraid of this, but if you feel that you need one, definitely look into how to get that attachment for this. But um, they, sewing machines are generally pretty safe considering, you know, we know the needle's going up and down. So be really safe with that, okay? And um, again, look at your manual so you get to know um, all the names and parts of your sewing machine. And of course, I'm always available at Adriana at letsmakeitacademy.com and I will answer any questions you have. So my sewing machine is ready to go and threaded, meaning uh, the spool of thread is set up on top and I threaded the top of my machine and the bobbin is put in and the threads are out and ready to go. The only reason why I'm not showing you how to thread a machine is because we all have different machines and depending on the brand of your machine or um, the style, whatever it is, there are a few different things that um, won't match when threading a machine. So at this point, I'm sure you have the user manual and or you looked up the video online and learned how to thread your machine. So let's make this pouch. So what you're gonna need to make this really simple pouch like we've made in the previous course in the very beginning is your rectangle of fabric. It doesn't matter what size it is, but if you want, you could use the uh, pattern from course three, let's make a pouch. And you're gonna fold it in half. So mine is just the plain cotton and it, there's no print, it's a solid. So it doesn't really have a wrong or right side. But of course, if you have a wrong or right side, make sure that you have the right sides touching. So you would be looking at the wrong sides here. And we're gonna use two pins, which by now you totally know how to do that and how to pin. All right, so I'm using two pins, one, two, and then another two on this side. And like I've mentioned in the past, sewing really is and really does require a little bit of an engineering mind. Although a bit simpler, but you have to think before you sew, meaning where do you want your opening to be, right? Do you want your opening to be up here or do you want it to be here? This is pretty um, square, but I know I want my opening here. So I am going to sew making sort of a U shape. I'm going to come down here, pivot straight up to here, pivot and up. And now I'm going to show you what it means to do back stitches. And I will show you all this as I'm using a different color thread so that it stands out. So on your sewing plate here, you'll see that you have uh, ruler marks or increments here that help you keep 
a seam allowance. So all that means is that when you're sewing, you are gonna wanna keep according to the project and how, whatever they suggest for seam allowance, you're gonna wanna keep that your edge of the fabric lined up to whatever increment it's asking for. So when I measure my needle and my foot plate, mine shows me 3 eighths of an inch and that is the perfect seam allowance. So I'm going to work with 3 eighths of an inch, meaning when I'm sewing, I'm going to line up my fabric to the edge of the foot pedal. So that's really easy for me and it works. But if you're sewing something and it says it wants a quarter of an inch, then that's the quarter of an inch line, for example, and I would uh, use and line up my fabric up to that line. So as you're sewing, you would practice uh, your hand-eye coordination and keep the fabric straight so that it lines up to there. But for this, um, 3 eighths of uh, seam allowance is perfect. So we're, what we're gonna do at the top is we're gonna do a back stitch, okay? And it's very simple to do. So I'm going to bring the needle down into the fabric. Let me just straighten that out, into the fabric and put down my foot pedal because you never sew with the foot pedal up and i'm going to sew about three or four stitches towards me and then stop so that takes you could do it with the hand wheel but i'm going to use the foot pedal so one two three and then i'm going to stop and i'm going to press down and my machine has a lever here right so i'm going to press down here's my lever i'm going to press down and hold it down as i um, sew and cover those three stitches. Here's what I mean. This is what back stitching means. So I went forward three stitches and now we're gonna go back. I'm gonna hold the lever down and it's gonna go back one, two, three. And now I'm gonna continue sewing. And you can easily sew over your pins or you can remove them, whatever you're more comfortable with, right? So notice how my pins, the pin head is away from the needle. So whenever you're pinning and sewing, make sure your pin head is always away from the needle and you pin perpendicular to the direction you're sewing. So that means if you're sewing this way, your pins intersect this way. Don't keep them so, don't pin this way the way uh, or the direction you're sewing because what happens is they, they will get stuck either in the foot uh, plate here or somewhere and you don't wanna give yourself issues. The less issues, the happier you'll be. So I'm gonna continue sewing just to show you. So I'm gonna make my way down, keeping my fabric lined up. And when I get towards the edge, right, with my pivoting, I'm just gonna use the hand wheel, keep the needle into the fabric, lift the foot pedal, make a turn, right, make a turn, Whoop, let me just move here, put the foot pedal down and go back. Keeping it lined up, there I go, keeping the needle in the fabric as I pivot, keeping my fabric lined up, and I'm going to come down. Let me just come out there. There we go. And then when I get towards the end, because these are my pressure points, I am going to back it up. One, two, three, go front and done. So when you lift up your foot, make sure the needle is out, lift up your foot, and now you have your thread. So you can cut it with your shears or scissors, or on the back of every sewing machine, there are um, there's a little area here that cuts your thread. I am in a habit of always using that instead of using shears. Okay, so once you have that, you're going to remove your pins. Just back this up, okay? You remove your pins. You always clean your sewing by trimming the threads, right? You trim your threads. And then the corners, if you remember from the other time, you're gonna trim those. And then you are going to turn it right side out. And this is one of the best things I love giving my students to do when they practice using a sewing machine because it does practice, um, it does help you practice sewing on fabric and in straight lines and pivoting. All right, so you can use dull scissors or shears and to push out your corners or if you have a point turner you can use that and now i test it and it's really strong 
and you have a pouch. So I suggest you make a few of these, all different sizes, and go for it, okay? Um, and I will show you now how to make a rounded corner pouch so that you can practice your curves. Okay, so now we're gonna make a curved pouch. And for this reason, what I did was I uh, actually drew one in with a pencil mark. So you can do that too. Take any rectangle of fabric, fold it in half, uh, right sides together, as you see here. If I could get this, hey. Okay, right sides together. And you are gonna draw yourself a nice curve so you can practice on that. And remember, if this is your sewing direction, you're gonna pin perpendicular into that okay so let's get started and now you're going to be able to see the thread better i noticed on the pink you couldn't really see the red but it's okay you guys get it i'm sure all right so again hand-eye coordination get your needle right onto the line or the edge and this time i'm not going to actually have to keep uh, a seam allowance there because i have uh, the line to follow so I'm gonna start with doing my back stitch. Three front, three back, and I move ahead. You can move the pin out of the way and go. Now, as you start the curve, you're gonna slow it down and you're gonna gently move and guide the fabric. Don't worry, it's only practice. Get the pin out of the way. Less pins, the better. Move this guy. And at the end, as you've guessed, you have to backstitch. So back, one, two, three, front. Okay. Lift, and I cut the thread. When you're done sewing, clean up your sewing, meaning trim all your threads before you do anything else. Remember, you're using your shears that you that are made for your uh, fabrics that you don't use for anything else but your fabrics. So this time, because it's a curve, we're going to give it a little trim. We're going to get close to, but not so close to our sewing. And we're going to cut around the curve. If we left all of this on, it would not curve well. The sides would be okay, but not uh, the curve. And then we're gonna turn it right side out and we can check out our curved pouch. So again, make as many of these as you'd like in order to practice curves on a sewing machine. So I'm just pressing it all out. I'm testing it, right? Cause that's why we make our back stitches. And I didn't press this out all the way. Well, and there you go. You have your curved pouch.